हेलो माय डॉक्टर फ्रेंड्स दिस इज माय सेकंड वीडियो विथ यू विथ ए व्यू टू हैव हार्ट टू हार्ट टॉक विथ यू एंड ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट सॉल्यूशन टू द प्रॉब्लम्स व्हिच आर बीइंग फेस्ड बाय द मेडिकल प्रैक्टिशनर्स इन डे टू डे प्रैक्टिस यू माइट हैव सी इन माई फर्स्ट वीडियो इन विच आई हैव सेड that consent for medical treatment for diagnosis for operation it forms the very basis of medical jurisprudence without consent no doctor or medical practitioner can proceed to do anything with respect to the bodily integrity of the patient this is the basis of the entire jurisprudence and if something is done without consent then the courts have held time and again that it amounts to trespass to a person now we will have to find out from the record of the law what is the meaning of the word consent meaning of the word consent under section 87 of indian penal code is that a person who is able to give his free opinion free consent then that person who is of 18 years of age is entitled under section 87 to give his consent for any procedure or for anything under the law so also one more thing is that under section 11 of the indian contract act a person who has been more than 18 years of age is person who is competent to contract and therefore his consent is regarded as a valid legal consent next thing is that my friends we have to find out what are the types of consent now i have already said in my first video that the consent is a very broad topic and therefore what is required is that the consent should be either it can be implied or it can be expressed but it must be informed consent now my friends you must be aware that in old days when the doctors were regarded as next to gods and there was system of family doctors there was no necessity of express written consent and the patients used to rely fully on what doctor say and that consent can be said to be implied consent as a matter of fact when a patient comes to a doctor to his clinic for his ailment then it is presumed by law that he has impliedly consented to the doctor for physical examination and for auscultation and for other necessary things which are required to be done but due to the overload of the case law due to the consumer act and due to the mal practices in the medical profession now express written consent has become the order of the day now what is required by law is that the consent should be in writing and it should be fully informed the patient should be apprised of the full nature of ailment of the consequences of the operative procedure of possible surgery etc so all these things should be told to the patient in fact supreme court in usa and uk they say that there should be perfect record maintained by the medical practitioners for having confirmed the consent of the patient for any procedure that they undertake one more thing is that the entire medical jurisprudence is based on the bolam's case Bolam versus Friar Hospital case is a well known celebrated historical and landmark case in which the Bolam was suffering from mental instability and he had to be given electroconvulsive therapy at that time there was implied consent of Bolam and therefore in spite of the possibility of fracture by electroconvulsive therapy the court held that the bolam had given consent absolutely for the procedure and the doctors were not held liable for any of the procedures like ect etc
Next thing is that, my friends, the Indian law is mostly derived from English law. What we have learned, what we have studied, what we have been reported in the case law, it is most of the times the uh, reliance is placed on the English law and the UK and USA decisions of the, their courts, like courts of appeal, Queen's Bench and the Supreme Court of USA. So first of all, we will have to find out which are the important cases for the sake of consent given by the English courts. The first case that I would like to refer is the case of which is called as Border versus Levy Shan. In this case, it so happened that that lady had suffered from fracture of right humerus and therefore she had gone to a clinic for getting her hand repaired. There was a question before the registrar and the houseman that the IV line had to be put up. Where the IV line has to be put up was an important point because the patient had disclosed that recently she had left side mammectomy and axillary node clearance and therefore she requested not to do anything with respect to her left arm. But the registrar said that he is helpless and in case of an emergency the cannula had to be put and therefore without giving any chance for obtaining consent specifically for the left hand cannula, the registrar on duty, he put a, a cannula in the left arm. It so happened thereafter that because of that cannula, there she developed permanent disability and she had to suffer a lot because of that. Any experienced doctor or physician would have waited for some time to see if it is urgently necessary for putting a cannula and then he might have put. But the registrar, being a person who is of a junior cadre, he did not think it proper and as per the established protocol, he put the cannula. And because of the suffering, she went to the court. In the court, the court declared that the action of the registrar and the doctor was correct in the sense that it was as per the protocol and it was necessary for emergency. However, the lady, Border, Mrs. Border, she took an about turn in her pleadings in the appellate court and she said that no specific consent was taken for putting cannula in her left arm in spite of having informed the doctors about the possible problems and about the possible complications and about actually her suffering. And therefore she said that it amounted to trespass to person as the cannula was put without obtaining prior written express consent. The appellate court agreed with her and agreed to give her compensation and for justification the matter was again remanded back to the lower court for verification of details and for actually calculation of the amounts to be awarded to her by way of damages. Therefore, this fact makes it clear that while doing any act, it would be advisable to obtain express written consent with full knowledge to the patient. One thing is very clear in the legal medical jurisprudence that the consent would not be necessary in some of the cases. Which are those cases? Number one, the consent would not be necessary if the patient himself discloses that he doesn't want to know anything about the consequences of the procedure that is being undertaken for his body. Secondly, if the patient is unconscious or incompetent to contract in the sense that the patient is not aware or fully awake also, in that case, this is an emergency, the doctor is exonerated and excluded from taking consent. And thirdly, if the consent, if the procedure of the operation or the procedure of the treatment is detrimental seriously to the health of the patient, in that case also the doctor can be excused for not expressing everything in terms of the illness or the likely treatment to the patient. So these are the three exceptions for the consent. Then the second case which is of importance of the UK courts is that Montgomery versus Larkinshire. Now in this case it so happened 
that the lady had come for her delivery to a maternity clinic and lady was of a very slim nature and she was diabetic also therefore there was possibility of shoulder dystocia but then this fact was never explained by the doctors to the lady and she was allowed to undergo delivery by vaginal procedure so the vaginal delivery was done by her was actually allowed and their caesar was not in fact advised to her and therefore it so happened that because of the problem of shoulder dy dystocia wherein the shoulder of the baby gets stuck up to the pelvis of the mother and it causes disability after after the birth and the same thing happened and there was severe disability to the baby born in this case supreme court said of the uk that the lady should have been allowed to inform that the caesar is a safe procedure but since the consent was not obtained for caesar and it was not properly explained also to the patient caesar was not done and resulting in the disability of the born child and the doctors were held held liable in the circumstances therefore what is required is that the proper appreciation of the case proper assessment of the case and proper apprisement of the case should be done by a medical practitioner to the patient before taking any risk with respect to the bodily integrity of the patient in the third case of liverpool in it so happened that again it is related to the gynecology and obstetrics in which again there was use of forceps and the forceps they cause intracranial hemorrhage and severe disability to the child neurological disability in life and therefore the patient had to suffer so the court held that actually in this case also if the caesar would have been performed in this case there would have been no problem and a proper guidance should have been given by the doctor and after proper guidance the consent should have been obtained for caesar therefore i feel that looking to the case law of the uk courts the necessary care and caution should be taken by the doctors my my doctor friends and that will help them in future also in medical practice now in the next session we will have discussion about the consent in indian cases and that will be very interesting i feel you will be with me in the next session also thank you